So things have changed even more this week. Yasmin, she got home last Sunday, la well, she got home Saturday last week, and so she was here Sunday when you saw the video, but Glenn and I had actually recorded the service earlier. And so since that time, we've begun self-isolation. So this week, Glenn and I are practicing social distancing fully, each of us recording our portions from our own homes. And so let's hear God's call to us today. More than those who watch for the morning, we wait faithfully for you, Lord. With our questions and our cries, in our hopes and expectations, we wait fully for you, Lord. So come, come let us worship the Lord our God together and offer our prayers and praise and faithfulness. Let us join together in prayer. God of the past, present, and future, God in whom all things are renewed, we praise you. In the face of all that wearies us and worries us, your words echo through the centuries with love and hope. As we follow the footsteps of Jesus in this Lenten season, your cross still stands before us. The way of sacrifice, perhaps seeming more real this time around. We come to you, trusting you are never far from our sorrows. Jesus, you walk with us, sharing our tears. You stand beside us when we don't know which way to turn. In this hour of worship, renew our trust in your resurrection promise and draw near to us when we need you most. Whenever we can't find the words to say, help us more deeply call on your holy name, Lord. God of our lonely places and hard times, there is no place too dark for your presence to shine through. There is no situation beyond your grace. And we confess that sometimes we lose track of you. When sorrows stack up or loneliness surrounds us, forgive us where we've let hopelessness overwhelm us. Stay with us as we go through every valley of shadows. Bring life where we see only death, healing where we find pain, Encourage where there's fear. Stay with us and make our way as we make our way along the path Jesus walked. And so we come to you this day, praying as you taught us to by joining our voices together to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom. The power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, remember the promise Paul declares to us. What shall separate us from the love of Christ that is in Christ Jesus? Hardship, distress, peril, or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through God who loves us. Neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. So let us rejoice that no matter what is happening in the world around us, no matter what we may have done, God's deep love will never let us go. We gather together this day with him 815. New every morning is the love.
Our first lesson for the day is coming from the Old Testament from Ecclesiastes, reading in chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. There is a time for everything, and a season for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. To everything there is a season, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Our psalm for today is coming from Psalm number one. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers, not so the wicked. They are like shaft that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will stand, not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. But our gospel lesson for today is coming from the gospel according to John, reading in chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. May God add his blessing to these readings from his word. Our anthem today is again by our organist, Glenn Chafe. For everything there is a season. Oh. Uh -huh. 
So I've now been inside for the better part of a week. Okay, in many ways, that's not entirely true. Because Jasmine and I did shovel out the driveway after the snowfall. But we haven't taken one step off our property. The rules of self-isolation have been followed fully. Now being inside so much, it's afforded me time to, to read some of what my, what my friends have been writing to, to their various congregations. In doing so, I had a stark reminder of how, of how different the weather is between Vancouver Island and the island of Newfoundland. A colleague, Reverend Reed Chudley in British Columbia, he wrote, I finally got out in my garden this week, weeding. That's all I did. No planting yet, nothing interesting, just weeds to pull. Now, I haven't been anywhere near my garden yet. In truth, I was excited to see before the snowfall that some parts of it finally had limited snow cover. It was mostly the parts that were really close to the path that I'd shoveled all through the winter, or the bits that were right next to the house and warm up a little more. I do, however, remember that constant battle with the weeds last year, a battle that never seemed to be won. Part of it could be the failures from the fall not ensuring that, that every weed is removed before the first snow falls. And so the weeds, they have a nice head start before any flower gets to, gets to try to work its way out as the snow melts. It could be that the weeds are, are just that much more resilient than, than the things I'd rather have growing in my garden. It could be that I'm, I'm never thorough enough at, 
at any point in the whole process, getting all of the weeds out to begin with. Because I don't really like weeding. I, I might even say I hate it. It's boring. It, it seems no matter how many I pull out one day that, that just as many have sprung up the next time I look. It's, it's never ending. It, it almost feels pointless. And even when you make an attempt to be, to be real thorough with, with one little patch of ground to make sure you got everything, you can't help but wonder, did I really get them all? Because weeds, they seem to have some of the deepest, most resilient roots. If you don't get all of the root, they spring right back up. It's one of the hardest parts about weeding. You can never be certain that you got all of it. Even if there's, there's no sign that, that anything's left on the soil on the surface of your garden. Likely part of why I dread weeding so much is, is that it doesn't always feel worth doing it. Or at least doesn't at the time. Because I'm not actually doing anything. Really all I'm doing is making room for the things that I want to be growing in my garden. I'm getting things out of the way. Reed, he commented how he was looking forward to planting, planting vegetables, maybe some berries too, maybe even an apple tree. He dreams bigger than I do. Where weeds once were, he mentions, good things can later come. Weeding is just making room for good things. It's, it's social distancing for flowers and vegetables, as he described it. And it made a lot of sense to me. As the snow melts more and more here, each day there's, there's likely going to be first new weeds to remove. More shooting up in, in places that, that, that I thought I'd already cleared. More that needs to be pushed back all the time. More room for, for flowers that always has to be created or, or the weeds are just going to take right back over entirely. Long before anything nice or pleasant appears in a garden. There's hours of weeding that's needed. Even as the good and pleasant things, as they start to grow, there, there still needs to be weeding. There's a lot of work and a lot of patience involved in gardening. More than I, I tend to have most summers, if I'm honest. All the work, all the waiting, all the diligent, it, it has to be kept up long before the first flower will bloom or where the first vegetable can be tasted. I also know that it can quickly become a losing battle. Last summer when Yasin and I got back from vacation, it, it looked like we planted weeds in our garden so well they'd managed to take over. Step away from the job and, and the battle can quickly be lost. Clergy aren't exactly immune to feeling frustrated or, or even defeated. When I watch the news each day, I'm, I'm not filled with feelings of confidence. As a diabetic asthmatic, watching a, a growing spread of a virus that, well, that not only threatens some people I care about, is really a, a threat to me personally. And seeing that those numbers only grow, it's not all that encouraging. Despite everything we're doing to, to try and stop the spread of COVID-19, it, it just seems to grow. And I'm not sure we could think of too many more things to halt, even if we wanted to. And yet with so much brought to a standstill, it seems that, that we're being overrun just the same. Of course, like weed, COVID-19, it has deep roots. It will pop back up and in each place one isn't completely diligent. Even with hard work, it, it won't vanish overnight. We won't, we won't catch all those roots right away. There will still need to be a period of vigilance even after things seem to be getting better or, or we'll find we're being over one with the weeds once more. But we're doing the right thing. I believe we are. We're, we're seeking to be good stewards of each other and our world. All the isolation and sacrifice and, and a, a great deal like weeding a garden. 
we're doing the right thing if, if we want to find that our vine will grow. We're preparing for better things, for, for when we will have freedom to move, freedom to gather, freedom for good times together. The truth, I, I wonder if in some ways we're even getting some of those things I prayed for on other occasions. Now, let me explain a little. Because I prayed many times the world we live in. That some of those scars left by, by our activity, the, the damage done to environment, would somehow be lessened, would, would be healed. This past week, I've, I've read about fish being seen for the first time forever in the canals of Venice. I've, I've read about clear skies being found in parts of China that seem to be permanently small. I've read about people singing to each other from rooftops. So perhaps we... We need a season, something like this, to, to be pruned as a society into, into remembering the sorts of things that we're supposed to find most important. I really, really wish we didn't need something quite this jarring, but, but the sad truth is that it often does take something that, that really is jarring to wake us up at all. We're, we're that content to just slumber along. But in all of it, we're still weeding. We're making space for better things to grow, for community, for friendship, for health and wellness. As all the health authorities have already said, what we're seeing now is simply the growth of the virus that, well, that's just lying there beneath the surface, that has taken root before the call to, to isolation and self-restraint was, was really activated. Not to mention a reminder to remain diligent if we don't want to find new pockets to appear once, once it at first seems to be a little better. Our work will certainly yield its fruit in due season. And so we're reminded, be patient. Trust. The one who tends us will see us through to the end. I believe we're being well informed on how to best battle a virus. I also believe we have a real opportunity in all this to, to reevaluate how deeply we've set our own roots in the soil that matters most. To really learn what it is to truly abide in Christ as, as he abides in us. And so we're called to trust, to keep on keeping on. It will take some time to, to see the good fruit of the work that we're now doing. In the meantime, we're, we're all farmers of sorts. Every season, a farmer has to have the courage to, to go out in faith and plant. Season by season, through perseverance, knowledge, and hard work, farmers will later bring in a harvest of plenty. They keep their minds on the good harvest that's coming. That's coming in its time. And so keep on with the good work. Keep on with, with our social distance now, because the harvest of our good work is surely coming. To everything there is a season, even to this. Abide in Christ, and he will abide in you. That is our promise. Let's join together in prayer. It's frustrating, Lord. Everything is stopped. The greatest sacrifices aren't, aren't seeming to get us out. And the truly greatest sacrifices aren't, aren't us who, who aren't getting to be social the way we used to be, but, but those whose very livelihoods have stopped and, and are at risk. Because no flu season I've ever seen has, has led to refrigeration trucks pulled up to hospital loading bays to act as temporary overflow mold. We seem to be doing everything possible and, and things only seem to be getting worse. Weeds are hard to keep down. Remind us that so long as we have some food on our table, a roof over our head, and love that surround us, we have enough. Remind us that while the weeds may, may seem to spring up eternal, the time and effort, a beautiful garden can bloom where once reeds seem to reign supreme. 
Remind us that in and through all of it, you are with us. A friend whose love abides, whose hope springs eternal. Amen. We'll continue our worship with hymn 746, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. In every season our God provides, at times much, at times little, always just enough. We give back from what we've been given even today, trusting that there will be enough for tomorrow. We still present tithes and offerings in a time such as this, but let's pray as we seek to consider what, what we may provide to our world. Lord, in a time of hoarding and fear, of wondering how the storms can possibly be weathered, as your people we still give. We give as an act of defiance, an act of rebellion against a world that tells us to hold on to the little you have. We give trusting that what is placed in your hands will be multiplied to yield much fruit, trusting that what we share will become the seeds of hope planted in another, trusting that you will abide among us always. Amen. May we continue praying together as we offer our prayers to the people. Lord, as COVID-19 takes a hold in Canada and seems to set ever deeper roots into our own island home, we turn to you, Lord, for hope and guidance. 
Lord, we aren't sure what will happen next. Help us to be calm in the midst of the storm. Remind us that you remain a faithful friend no matter what may come. As the seas of information batters our senses from all sides, some true, some false, most stalking new fears and anxieties. Help us to discern those steps that are still under our control. And may we boldly take those steps, knowing that a stumbling walk is all that you've ever asked of us. When fear makes it hard to breathe, slow us down, Lord. Remind us to fill our lungs with that fresh, clean air you give us. Assure us that the vine you tend will bear good fruit. In this season, when we're asked to refrain from touch with our hands, teach us how to reach out with our hearts and voices. For socially distant does not mean socially disconnected. May your perfect love cast out all our fears. May your divine hope remind us that there are brighter days ahead. Today we pray for doctors and nurses. We pray for technicians and janitors. We pray for caregivers and store clerks. We pray for epidemiologists and researchers. For all of those whose work keeps society flowing. We give thanks for them and ask that your protection would be over them. We pray too for those who are grieving, for those who are sick, for those whose end of days may be near. May your peace and comfort be even nearer. May you, our closest friend, remain by our side through this long walk. May the roots of these weeds be slowly exercised from our soil. And a great day of rejoicing come. Amen. Our closing hymn today is going to break our theme somewhat, although in another way it fits in a, in a very deep and meaningful way. There's been several different requests that have circulated from churches to, to have us all do the same thing at, at this time or that time. They've come from many different quarters lately. Some I've, I've done on my own as I see them. Others I've placed in the bin of, that's a wonderful idea, but but when each pastor has the ability to express their ideas through the world, through the internet, there's, there's only so many you can actually implement. I do know that, that a few other Presbyterian churches are implementing this idea that would have originally begun from a Lutheran church. And I said that we would be one of the churches that would, would join in. The hymn, Now Thank We All Our God, was penned by a Lutheran minister in the 17th century towards the end of the Thirty Years' War. The town he lived in had, had begun that period with four clergy. One of them, when, when trouble came, he, he simply left town. As conflict ravaged large parts of what's now Germany, refugees appeared. Unfortunately, among their meager processions, they also brought plague. As time passed, the two of the other clergy succumbed to the disease and died. Martin Rinkark remained. He's noted as burying almost 4,500 people, including his own wife. At times, conducting 50 funeral services a day. Eventually, the the need for mass graves made even providing a, a simple services like that impossible for each person. But still he sought to serve his community. And if the death toll from plague wasn't bad enough, war too reached the town. The Swedish army demanded a ransom from the town that, well, that they simply didn't have enough of to pay. Martin acting as a sort of ambassador, he begged for mercy. He prayed for mercy. His mercy was shown with this, this first ray of light after years of trouble. 
he penned this hymn for his, for his surviving children to join him in offering and thanksgiving that day. Our troubles are not nearly so severe as his and, and hopefully never will be. But across time, his song of hope and trust still rings out above trouble. When we look, we can find things to be thankful for. So I invite you to join in hymn 457. Now thank we all our God. <laughs> future is not in doubt. God has good plans for us. We will bear much fruit. Abide in Christ as Christ abides in you. One day our weeding will prove worthwhile. The garden will bloom and we shall feast together. And what a glorious day that will be. Until that day, rest in the promises of God. For we are united in the blessing of God the Father. We are covered daily by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we are held fast in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, this and every day. Amen. Thank you.
Thank you all.